Hey everyone, welcome back to Head in the Clouds, your ultimate destination for all things tech. If you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button now and ring the bell so that you never miss out on our tech talks. Today, we're exploring the world of Docker, which is a crucial part of modern DevOps practices. We'll explain the concepts of Docker files, Docker images, and Docker containers, and show you how they have transformed software development and deployment. Let's begin with the fundamentals. As we know, Docker is a software tool that developers utilize to construct, transport, and executes applications within containers. These containers are comparable to lightweight packages that contain all the necessary components for running an application, including code, runtime, system tools, software libraries, and settings. In this video, we'll provide an overview of Docker's main components and its basic functionalities. So let's break them down into three key components that we're discussing today. Docker files, Docker images, and Docker containers. A Docker file is like a recipe or blueprint for building Docker images. It's a text document that contains all the necessary commands you need to build an image using the command line. You use a Docker file to tell Docker what to include in your image. This file outlines the steps needed to set up an environment for your application, such as installing all the dependencies and configuring the runtime environment. Think of it as a script with instructions for creating a Docker image. Let's take a look at an example of a Docker file for a basic web application using Node.js. This is an example of a Docker file for a Node.js application. The Docker file includes several commands that perform different tasks. Here's what each command does. From node 14, this line sets the base image. Here, we're using node 14, which means we are using a pre-built Node.js environment. This is crucial as it eliminates the need to manually install Node.js inside the container. Workdir or work directory sets the working directory inside the Docker container. User source app is a conventional location, but it can be any path that you set up for your application. It is essentially where we'll place all of our application code. Copy package.json file. This step copies both package.json and package-lock.json files, if available, into our working directory inside the container. These files define our project dependencies. Run npm install. This command installs the Node.js dependencies defined in package.json file. It's run inside the container, ensuring that our dependencies are isolated and consistent regardless of the host environment. Copy. With this command, we will copy all the files from our project directory into the container. This will include all the application code and any other files needed for the application to run. Expose 3000. This command tells Docker to expose port 3000, which is the default port for Node.js applications. This doesn't actually publish the port. It functions more as documentation for the person who runs the container. And lastly, the CMD instruction specifies the command to run when the container starts. Here, we're using npm start, which is typically defined in your package.json to start your Node.js application. Now, let's move on to the second key component in the Docker ecosystem, the Docker image. 
Often, when discussing Docker, we highlight its ability to package an application with its environment into something called an artifact. But what does artifact really mean in software development? In this context, an artifact refers to any file or collection of files that are produced during the software development process. These can be compiled code libraries, configuration files, and even containers. Essentially, an artifact is a tangible outcome of your build process. In the world of Docker, the artifact that we create is known as a Docker image. However, this isn't just a bundle of your application's compiled code. A Docker image is a comprehensive package that encapsulates not only your application, but also every element required to run it effectively. This includes the application's complete runtime environment. Let's visualize a Docker image as an all-encompassing package, something similar to a zip or jar file, but with far more contents. Unlike jar or zip files, which may only hold the application code or binaries, Docker images encompass several additional components. These include the specific operating system layers necessary for the application. This means that the image contains not just the application, but also the operating systems, for example, Linux, that it needs to run on, ensuring compatibility and reducing system level conflicts. The second one are the necessary tools and libraries. For instance, if it's a Node.js application, the Docker image would include NPM and the relevant Node modules. For a Python application, it would contain the Python interpreter and any required Python packages. And the last one is the application layer itself, like uh, Python or Node.js runtime. This is crucial because it means that the Docker image isn't just carrying your application. It's also bringing along the exact runtime environments your application needs to function. So whether you're working with Java, Node.js, Python, or any other programming language, Docker images provide a standardized and efficient way to package your application along with its entire runtime environment. This approach greatly simplifies the deployment process and ensures that your application runs consistently across different environments. Docker images are, in a sense, a modern and a comprehensive evolution of traditional application packaging methods. With Docker, you're not just shipping code, you're shipping the entire working environment of your application. This is why Docker is such a powerful tool in the world of software development and deployment. Imagine a well-organized chart. At the base, you have the hardware, which is a physical server or the virtual machine where everything runs. Just above the hardware layer, there's the operating system. This is crucial as it's the environment where Docker runs. Now installed on this operating system is where Docker itself resides. Think of Docker as the bridge between the operating system and the containers. Above Docker, we have two closely related but distinct elements, Docker images and Docker containers. When a Docker image is run, it becomes a Docker container. Containers are the live running instances of Docker images. 
They're isolated environments containing everything necessary to run the application. The beauty of a container is that it's a lightweight, standalone and executable package that ensures the application runs uniformly and consistently regardless of the environment. So let's clarify the differences between Docker images and containers. Docker images are immutable, meaning they don't change once they're created. They're smaller and faster, used as blueprints for building containers. Docker containers, on the other hand, are mutable. They're larger and can be slower, but this is where your applications run. Containers add a writable layer to the image, allowing the application to interact with users and other services. And that brings us to the end of our insightful journey through Docker files, Docker images, and Docker containers. We've explored how Docker files act as the blueprint, Docker images as the building blocks, and Docker containers as the final running applications. In our upcoming episodes, we will explore more advanced topics such as Docker commands, Docker images creation using Dockerfile, Docker registries, and container management. So stay tuned for more content. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button now and turn on notifications. Thank you for watching. Keep coding, keep exploring, and as always, stay curious. Until next time, goodbye.